right, so next up, we're going to make the LED flash on this Atmega 328 board one more time. But this time what we're going to do is we are going to replace the standard uh, C style uh, LED toggling with assembler routines. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to do something like this. So you can see over here, what I've got is the, the standard way that we do it in C, where we have data direction and port B register is set and then we do an exclusive OR on port B. That's normally how we do it. What I want to do is show you, you know, from the disassembled view that I took a screenshot of earlier, you can see that uh, this exclusive OR can be replaced with at least four different assembler uh, operations. And I'm gonna show you how that sort of looks, all right? So let's take a look at this. All right. All right, so I've now downloaded the code onto the board and my breakpoint is set and I've halted. So I should be able to step through. Yeah, that's turned on and it's turned off again. So we can see that that works. Great. Now let's comment that out and replace it. We are going to replace it with a version of the same thing, but in this case, and I'll show it to you, I'm gonna copy and paste it in. All right, so these are the equivalent commands that you would see if you disassembled the, uh, the operation for exclusive or, except that I've done something a little different. Okay, so you can see that you've got your ASM function right here. You have your first line, which is a, um, you're moving uh, the value 5 into R25, so register 25, and uh, and that's because we want the contents of port B to be copied um, uh, from memory location 5, okay, because port B is at memory location 5, and uh, then we're going to put a value of 20 in uh, in hex into the um, into R24, and that's because that corresponds to bit 5 in that we're going to eventually manipulate in port B. We call exclusive OR here between R25 and R24. And then we send the value that's stored in R24 back into memory location 5, which happens to be port B. All right. Now, right off the bat, you wouldn't know that, that memory location 5 is port B. You'd have to look it up in the data sheet. Okay. But Trust me, that's that's the case, and that's how you access it if you put in hard-coded values for particular ports. Now, the thing that I've done here is I've added in, in this last line right here, I've added in a clobber list. That clobber list, so we can have a list of registers here, a re list of registers there, that uh, has to do with input and output uh, um, values inside of my assembler commands. We're not interested in that right now. What I want to do is say that in this particular group of assembler statements, I'm using R25 and R24, two registers. I'm trying to tell the C compiler, if you've been using R24 and R25 before this, then know that I'm gonna clobber them. I'm going to knock them out. I'm going to make them bad within here because I'm gonna use them. If there's any contents in there, please deal with them ahead of time. And if the compiler is behaving properly, it will say, oh, I need to take care of them. I'll store them somewhere else, maybe onto the stack, and then bring them back afterwards. This is my clobber list. So it's to prevent clobbering from happening. So let's try and run this code one more time. Okay, it's compiled. We're going to run it onto the board. Okay, I'm now connected. I'm gonna step through. Okay, that's been turned on and now running through here, I've run those ASM commands, those assembler commands in 
load in direct, exclusive or and out, and it turned off the LED. We succeeded. All right, let's try out the next version. All right, so hard coding in a value for the port, not generally a good idea because when you switch from one architecture to another, or if you get it wrong, things will uh, not work out the way you want it to. So one of the things you can do is you can state using here this percent zero, you can say, I've got basically a variable inside of my, well, it's a parameter, okay? Um, uh, it, it's some value that can change inside of my assembler code and I'm not sure what it is because it might change from one version to another or maybe I have trouble looking stuff up in the data sheet. What I, what I do is I call in a special function that's available within the compiler that looks for the IO addresses, the input output port addresses for the special uh, function registers. In this case, I'm saying I'm interested in port B. Look up the actual numeric value of the memory location for me. And it will do that, okay? It will look it up in this list. This is the list that occurs just before the clobber list, all right? And uh, and so this goes, uh, I'm, I'm setting it up uh, specifically, uh, I think this was for integers, I think. I'd have to check <laughs> my documentation. Um, and, uh, and so what I'm, saying is replace whatever that value is inside of percent zero right there. Let's try to see if this is going to work. All right. So I'm calling up my code. All right, we're going to step through the code. And there you go, an equivalent statement, but this time I didn't hard code in the value for port B. I called in a function to look it up, which is a smarter thing to do generally. All right, the last version. Now you'll see right here, I've got another call to port B. I don't want that, okay? but it's in a separate operand um, location than in the out command, okay? So I have to place it differently in the list of parameters that go into, uh, into the, um, uh, th that, that modifier grouping at the very end of my assembler command. So what we have right here is a uh, percent zero Right here to replace the the five, I've placed it. I placed another call right here. All right, and so I'm looking up both argument zero and argument one in here. All right. So let's now run. Well, we'll compile it. Now we'll run it. step through and it worked all right let's uh, take a look at the disassembly and you can see that sure enough in my disassembled version of the code so basically what happened is everything was compiled in the uh, object files were then taken apart and uh, read well translated back into assembler that's what disassembly does and you can see that Port B has been placed back in its numeric form here, and port B is back in its numeric form there. So the replacement uh, of those arguments, okay, of those operands worked.